Today Kelly is making banana bread. Okay, in the bowl here I have one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. To that I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking soda. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. And then in this bowl, I already, I had uh, ripe bananas that were going to go bad, so I went ahead and threw them in the freezer. There's three of them in here. If otherwise you don't have to use frozen ones, you could use regular, um, just ripe bananas. Um, it does get it a little bit um, more watery, so we will cut back a little bit on our non-dairy milk when we do add that in to make up for the difference in that. So in here I've got my three ripe bananas. I've kind of smushed them up a little bit here. Um, I don't have a mixer with me on the bus. I've got one ordered. Hopefully it'll come soon. So I'm just going to mix it up with a fork. But if you're at home, you can go ahead and use a mixer. And then to that, um, we're going to add in two thirds cup sugar. And then normally I would say add a half a cup of your non-dairy milk, but I'm going to add just a little bit less. I'm going to go more like a third of a cup or a little bit more than that, just to make up for the difference of the moisture that came off of those um, bananas. And then you want a half a cup of, usually I buy plain um, non-dairy uh, yogurt. They didn't have any, it's hard to find right now. So I did buy vanilla. Vanilla I don't think is gonna make a difference in, because I'm gonna add vanilla extract to this as well. So I'm not sure how much is actually in this container. Usually it's about a half, yep. So that's they're gonna be the whole container. And then we're going to add in a half a cup of vegetable oil. And then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix this up here. Okay, so I lied. I'm going to switch from a fork to a whisk. And I'm going to slowly add in flour to this. You just want to mix it till it's all incorporated. You will still see some lumps because of the banana, but you just want to get it all mixed up so you're not seeing any more of the dry flour in there. simple. And then you want to set your oven to 350. I have taken, you want a loaf pan. These are a little bit smaller, so I am going to see about going ahead and putting them into two different ones. But I always put a little bit of parchment paper around there uh, before I lightly spray with this, any kind of cooking spray. I have an olive oil one. That way when it's all done, it's really easy to lift it out. This pan, it comes out of pretty well because it's a silicone one. So it, it usually releases it really well. Um, but when you get your metal pans and stuff, sometimes it's a little bit harder to get it out of there. So with that, you could just pick it right out. So we're just gonna pour this in. So actually, I might go ahead and fill it all the way up. This, this pan is very deceiving, so I can get it all into one. 
looks a little bit longer, but it's skinnier. Okay. So we're just waiting for the oven to heat up and then we'll get that in there. Okay, it is up to temperature now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this in. It's gonna take approximately 60 minutes to, to bake. You just need to keep an eye on it. You're gonna test it just like you would a cake. You put either a toothpick or a knife down in the center. But if it comes out clean, it's done. Okay, it's been in here for an hour, so it's done now. I did check and it does come out clean. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on a rack here and let it cool for about 30 minutes or so. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. It's pretty cool now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and lift this out of here. You can see how easy that is to take it out of there that way. I'm just gonna go ahead and probably should have a different knife here. It's my work knife. It is still a little bit warm. She's cutting it early because somebody was fancy about it. Somebody couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> but there it is. Nice and yummy.